Fanny. Weekends on 2FM. OK, let's take a look at this now because uh, this weekend sees the release of It Won't Always Be Like This, which is the debut album from Inhaler. They have a bunch of gigs, by the way, coming up as well uh, towards the end of the year. Uh, the end of September through October, it's the UK. And then they've got nine Irish gigs in December. Good luck getting tickets for those. Uh, ending up with four in Christmas week at the Academy in Dublin. They've got one there on the 11th of December as well at the Workman's Club. And then it's Belfast, Limerick, Cork and Killarney also. So who is the band? Well, they are Robert Keating on bass, Josh Jenkinson on guitar, Eli Hewson on guitar and vocals, and Ryan McMahon on the drums. So I talked to them the other day and I started off by asking about, you know, the whole idea that it is a year later. I mean, has the album been released 12 months after it was supposed to be released? Yeah, I mean, the album, I think, originally was supposed to come out last summer. And, you know, as we've said, COVID was kind of a, a blessing in disguise for this album because, you know, we came off tour in March 2020 and we were supposed to only have a week off and that week has now turned into over a year. Um, and in that time, you know, we were able to write so many new tunes and, you know, half the album or songs that we haven't even performed live yet. So, you know, in, in that aspect, it was good. And, you know, we're, we've produced something that we're far more confident in than we perhaps would have been had we just gone in and recorded what we had a year ago. And, you know, we're constantly on the road. We were able to hone in on, you know, aspects of the album that we wouldn't yeah, have. Of course. By the way, when you say far more confident, that actually sounds kind of funny because up till like a year ago, obviously there's been no gigs the last five months. But before that, I saw you live three times. The difference between the first and last time was like about 10 years. I mean, it was like <laughs> confidence out the window. It was bizarre. Did you find that yourself that at some... I mean, look at what you've done. Look at the people you've played with. Look at the place. I'm not even talking about Mexico and trying to get in backstage to meet the Strokes. I'm talking about a thousand gigs on stage with Blossoms and everything else. I'm talking about touring the United States. I mean, that was the difference probably between the first and last gig that I saw. I saw one in... Um, so, uh, what did I see? Electric Picnic. And then I saw I saw Whelan's there. I don't know when that was. End of 19. And then I saw the one in the Temple Bar Music Centre as well. All those ones, right? But the difference was huge. Sorry, long question. Am I right? Oh, <laughs> you're, you're, a wonder, you're a wonderful man for words, Dave. Um, <laughs> between all of those gigs, uh, I think we've got just years and years of just, like, we're just thrown in the deep end, really, with all the gigs we were doing and all the shows. And we had, like, a choice either to just fall under or just get on top of it and just perform the best we can um, and I think it really just it really really helped us just be comfortable in our own skin and be able to get up every night and just feel like you know yeah. what you're doing Okay well I want to get back to the live thing in a minute or two but let's talk, talk about this guy Anthony Gann um, now I remember his name reading it all that from an album from about 2007 um, but the song called Icarus in particular I remember from the what do you call the band? The yes. Yeah, the hours. And then also he's got stuff to do with Peaky Blinders and Scott Walker and Stone Rose, etc. But what was he like to work? He was pulp and all that, the Mescaleros. If he was the Mescaleros, then what does that mean I saw him live on stage at the Olympia? Anyway, point is, um, was he good with you in the studio? I mean, I think good would be a bit of an understatement. Yeah. He's, he's, he's kind of been our mentor. Like, you know, um, he's a massive character um, and he's so much fun to be in the studio with. And he's a real... Um, music lover music lover and he's just you know to have that kind of energy in the studio is so not inspiring but it is inspiring but it's mm. also just like it, we're always having a laugh when we're in there so it's just a great place to be and he's yeah he's great really okay cool. by the way we're talking to Inhaler let's take a bit of this My Honest Face there you go, music from Inhaler, and we're back here talking to the band. That is my honest face. One of the songs that will be on the album. I want to talk about one or two that aren't as well that I did see live saying, why aren't they there? And uh, anyway, the, the, you, you have brought out a string of singles as well, which is kind of very important just to make sure that, you know, on this My Honest Face track um, was Anais Gallagher. Was she with you uh, on tour and make the video for the song? Yeah, she, she didn't direct it, but she... Um... Oh, right. Contributed a lot, a lot to and um, a lot of that footage is from our first tour with Touts, who are a band from Northern Ireland. Yeah, and um, yeah, that amazing. video is funny because we were so busy touring, and that was like our first ever night after night touring situation where we were like, oh, we actually have to do other things, we have to <laughs> do a video. So then we ended up getting basically a lot of footage from different people and trying to match it together. 
Um, that was we, and we like it. I think we it's a pretty rough and ready video, but it's an, it's kind of nice for us because it, it just reminds us of uh, that time being busy. But I just get the impression that like when it comes to inhaler, you really do like you've been working an awful lot in the last two years, COVID or non-COVID. And yet, when I hear about the four of you in terms of music, you guys didn't really get into music till you were about twelve or thirteen, did you? Which is quite old, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of a lot of people, I think, guess in music get involved in their really really young but i mean i didn't really take music seriously until i was like 14 13 yeah um and then i was like oh yeah i'm, I'm really into this and then it just kind of it really formed naturally because like as well as being bandmates we're kind of best mates and um yeah that was really what inspired the group in the first place it wasn't really music I think. yeah and you've been best mates all throughout your teens as well because if you think about it like you know if i say like well who's inspires you what music it is like i noticed that you eli on stage have worn a public image limited t-shirt um, a joy division a, a led zeppelin a nirvana i don't know if you're making a statement there but then i'll go to robert and say that when you robert and eli were in the shop and sort of messing around with guitars are you telling me that that's one of the first times you ever did anything and suddenly you wrote two songs by the time you came out the door of the shop am i supposed to believe that <laughs> yeah that was uh, <laughs> in Walton, isn't it? i think we did we do yeah. have like three relic songs sure. that are really atrocious <laughs> yeah, you would want um we uh, yeah we just we did a lot of covers we did um one of our first ever gigs was a grand social battle of bands where we did like kings of leon i think we were actually we uh, were very young for your that. man from the divine comedy was judging it yeah he gave us best band name yeah we neil got neil hannon neil yeah. hannon yes, best yeah. band name yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair i don't think the other names are very good but yeah in, in one way like as like becoming a band did it start off as like well look a year off before going to college let's just see what happens yeah, it was exactly that, and I think all our parents were a bit like, "Oh God." I I I still haven't I still haven't told my parents that I'm not going to college. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm I'm going to break it to them gently someday. Would you say that it, like there is still a journey with Inhaler that you don't know who you are yet as a band, and the journey and the interesting road is all you need at the moment. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. I mean, we've got a brand new world to enter into once once the pandemic's over. Yeah, you know, so it's gonna be it's gonna be new and exciting and scary and different for everyone, and so we're just we're really excited for people to hear these songs, really that that are on this album. We're excited to get out and play them for people and see the world again, and yeah, you know, it's just like journey's only beginning. If, if yeah. You know, so we're excited. But at the same time, the world that you have seen, what was your idea of being in a band? I mean, was it like, you know, like, has it been fulfilled in any way? You're in a van, you're going, say, from New York up to Canada. Oh, look, there's Niagara Falls, all this kind of thing. Was it good or was it, oh, God, is hey, this the, the dream? Best, it's the best job in the world. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was amazing. The, the US tour is a good example of that because, like you said, I don't, I don't think we really thought about it at all. Like, the second we got a chance to support Blossoms in the US, I mean, we were just like, yeah, can't unbelievable! Believe. Couldn't believe it. And then when we got there, um, we we had one guy coming over to our Gary, our, our dear tour manager, but he couldn't come due to some reason. So we were in Washington by ourselves for two days, yeah. in which we did a gig when we brought all the gear ourselves in Ubers, <laughs> and we just realized that day that we were like we're in America now, and we just I think that gig was was poor. I think that was definitely like the most bizarre experience we've ever had. Yeah, that 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 like kind of week and a half period where we went to America and Mexico. Yeah. Uh, and then a couple months later, we went or a month later, we went to Japan. That yeah. was just and that was right before the pandemic. So, but, yeah, I really think that US trip, like we had to really fight for it. And it was kind of a, a make or break situation. Cheer up, baby. Um, is there something about that song that you could say, look, if people want to take a message out of the last year or whatever, that there might be a little bit of it? I mean, it's kind of about getting over yourself or is it? Yeah, I think that was a bit of a question when we were writing it and decide and release it was like you know in a time like this is it a bit on the nose and then we were just kind of like you know yeah it is but that's fine and you know it, it, the song has been with us for like three years we played it at every gig we've ever done and um our fans have been asking for it for ages and it's kind of just it was meant to be a love letter to them being like you know hold on stay in there we'll be back soon yeah well, hold on a second hold on that's all very like if it, if it is a love letter to the fans who probably feel isolated over the last year it just seems to work out perfectly even though it was written from a few years before that but you do say when i think of all the things i didn't do i can't help but blame it on you are you pointing the finger at somebody <laughs> uh, i think i'm pointing the finger at myself really it's a it's a kind of a song based on a conversation um just i think uh, especially in these times 
um, people are really isolated. And I think when you're on your own, you can kind of let your head go amok and uh, have some kind of fake narrative. And uh, I think people just kind of need to be with people. Honestly, I think it's really, really important for mental yeah. health. But OK, but just on that note, and I have to say it this way, if it is about getting over yourself in any way at all, as best you can, it's not like a song of your father's get out of your own way, is it? <laughs> uh, maybe subconsciously, I don't know. Just a few more bits and pieces I want to talk about, because, I mean, like, if you get a chance to do something, you've got to kind of take it. Otherwise, you say, like, if you say, I'm not ready, which is really stupid. So you were able to play um, as the opening act to Noel Gallagher in Malahide. Now, do you think that that was just a fantastic experience by sort of, if you like, jumping four rungs up the ladder, even though you might also admit we really were kind of out of our depth. I don't think we were really ready for it. Yeah, we were not ready for that one. No. And we <laughs> but, uh, said straight away when we got the offer, we said we weren't going to do it. Yeah. That was our first reaction because we were just like, you know, we, we shouldn't be taking this offer. We're still only doing small venues. We're still grinding away. It's not fair. And then we were just like, look, it's gonna, we're going to be playing at a well, half four. Realistically, it's just, it was just be no you know, one there. Any band who got that opportunity, regardless of if you're ready or not, you have to take yeah, it. We were just like, we got to take it. And we, we ended up playing, like I said, a half four to about 500 people. And then fast forward four and a half hours, and it's this, the whole the yeah. park is full of like, what, 50,000 people? Got free tickets to the show. But that was, great. yeah, that was the main thing for us. Pretty good, all right. But what, what about certain songs and the choice and the track listing and the way it goes? I mean, like, for instance, um, you have changed since I Want You, but you don't play it live anymore. It won't mm -hmm. always be like this is the album itself. But you do have a song, There's No Other Place, that didn't make the album. So yeah. when people would have thought, what? That's not on the album kind of thing. Who'd know you? So how, does, exactly. how does it happen? <laughs> I, I think it's hard to answer until people hear the songs on the album that I knew and kind of weigh them at the options. We definitely had conversations ourselves. There's still songs that to this day, maybe some of us would, would have liked in the album. But I think it was more just trying to find the songs that felt right together for the moment, you know, for the moment, yeah. Yeah. and I think just be, being the band that we are right now, like a lot of those old songs are maybe kind of taken down a direction that we're not going down anymore. And we want to maybe push us, our music in a different way. And these are all the songs that convey that the best. Um, was there ever a point where you all said, uh, okay, this is not just having a laugh. This is not just enjoying ourselves. This is not something to do in the last couple of years in school. We are not messing. Even I might go that far. We are a band and we are good. Was there ever a point when you said that to yourself? Um, we never get to say that we are good. Part. Yeah, maybe we're a band, but not. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that was Electric Picnic. The first time we played Electric Picnic, I think. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and that was, I mean, look, like, you know, Dave, hold, you can hold back. Don't tell people what we were like, but like, there was 300 people there. there. Um, and I think, you know, we walked off going, wow, yeah, I think that was all right. There was, you know, we packed out the place. Let's keep doing this. I think we could, there's something in this. That was the moment that, like, yeah. I think we all kind of switched. Right. Yeah, exactly. And the, wake up, and the wake up call after that was Electric Picnic the next year. You know, we played to 200 people in a church the first year and then 5,000 the next year in Rankin's Woods. So we, we then we were able to say, okay, we must be doing something right. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also, of all the things that happen on the road in America, I mean, you actually got to get down and kiss the feet of a statue of Lemmy in the Roxy. Tell me about yeah. the statue of Lemmy or in the pub beside the Roxy. It was mad to see because we, we all love Motorhead and just his, his was, uh, the Roxy was his playground, Lemmy. Yeah. So it was crazy to see it. But the fact that, yeah, we, when we were in America, like I did a load of gigs and we just get massive exes. Were some of us 21? Uh, no. No, no we, were, we were all to, but, uh, I was 19. Um, but uh, yeah, like you could definitely feel his spirit across the road because we were playing across the road from where he used to hang out every night. We grew up on Motorhead, you know, like um, yeah. we used to want to be a metal band. So. It was pretty special to see that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, it's, it's all starting now because once you have an album under your belt, it, it means an awful lot too. And also, when you go when you play the gigs, everybody's going to know the songs, and you're going to have new ones as well. And you just feel all that much better. So, the album itself, finally, um, is it? Would you think people that we should look at it as a variety of influences? Like, there's a lot of stuff there. Like, for instance, the whole indie rock pop guitar band thing. There's not an awful lot of it around at the moment. People are looking for it, but like, you don't want to be. Do you want to be something else? besides that or do you want to be something bigger yeah I, we want to have great indie rock songs but then we also want to have loads of other great songs i think, I think we just indie rock is where we started off yeah. you know like that was just what inspired us as teenagers to get into music and write songs and like i think we've really really hit a groove now where all bets are off and there's just no there's no walls keeping us in i think we can go any direction we want because even on the album we go a bit 
dare I say it, R and B at one point. And like, there's there's just lots of different moments of the album that I think kind of point in direction of where we're going on the second. And um, yeah, it's just exciting. It yeah. is a variety because we didn't want to push anything too much. We think you know it's a, it's a debut album, so at the end of the day, I don't want to say too much except just you know here are our collection of songs and decide if you like us or not, and then we'll take you on a on a massive journey maybe in the <laughs> next one. But yeah. um, yeah, we're really happy. Um, and yeah, there is there's going to be a variety of different. Themes. All right. Well, listen. Finally, then, Robert, you mentioned earlier on there, like you know, that you all oh, maybe play other instruments and all the rest of that. Do you all push each other to do different things? Um, you definitely push each other. Push each other. I push the boys to shower up more often. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we do. We do. Um, uh, yeah, like I'm I'm trying to learn the piano, and Richard Ryan's nearly a, a metronome at this point, and Josh is a. Uh, is it, we all look to Josh really for um, for musical expertise because that man is, has been practicing since he was out of the womb. And then Eli's just doing his thing with lyrics and he's always been great at them. But Ryan helps him. Yeah, we all just do our, do our own thing, but push each other at the same time. All right, well, let's hope it all gets better than it was in 2020 in terms of just getting out there and seeing people. It, w- it won't always be like this. It's the debut album. We're talking Inhaler. Guys, thank you very much indeed for talking to us on the programme today. Cheers, Dave. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Dave Fanning, weekends on 2FM.